Welcome to Back Cover, the podcast that explores the classic soul music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm Karen Williams. Join me and my co-host Steve Williams, and no, we're not related, as we flip over the album covers and share stories of the movers and shakers that created, wrote, and produced those classic soul sounds. We'll educate and entertain you all while keeping the music alive. Welcome to episode number four. Today, we're talking to Kim Mazel, considered the mother of house music. Kim is a singer, songwriter, musician, actress, two-time Grammy-nominated performer. She has spent most of her career in London and throughout Europe. But guess what? She's a GI native. So today, we're going to talk to Kim. In fact, this episode was so rich, we had to divide it into two episodes. So, episode number five will also be Kim Mazel. Kim Mazel uh-huh. is an American singer from the G. From Gary, Indiana. What That's side right. of Gary are you from? I'm from the west side, the best side. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I came in. Is uh-huh, today. Yeah, see that. He only know two ways to get here. <laughs> all right. Well, that's, uh, all right. So, okay. All right. Okay. So she is regarded as one of the pioneers of house music. Oh. And we're going to explain what house music is, too. So, okay. Okay. Uh, her music combines R&B. R&B. Soul. Soul. Disco. Uh, and? Pop. Mm-hmm. She is credited as the first lady of house music. Yeah. The first lady in the house. The first lady in the house. Got a little house coat on. Mm-hmm. House yeah. <laughs> Got a flip of oh, some cocoa. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kim Mazel is a graduate of Columbia College in Chicago with a Bachelor of Arts degree. Yeah. After graduating, she started a small label. I did. With two partners. I did. Under the name House, house to House Records That's and released right. her first single. This single was exported to London absolutely, via various DJs, yep. part of the Chicago House Music Explosion. Yep. The new form of music contributed to the birth and growth of rave, dance, club culture, pirate radio. They didn't have nothing. They took ours and it birthed everything. And the Right, and that's what it says right here. And it spread across Europe and the UK. It sure wow. did. It's still growing now. Still growing. Okay, I'm going to skip that part and go <coughs> yeah. here. Today, Kim has graced the stage and worked with such luminaries as... Sir Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger did his album Wondering Spirit. Mm-hmm. Oh, lips. <laughs> went to lunch, went to dinner. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he real skinny, ain't he? Yeah, but he love brown sugar. He sure oh. do. <laughs> she worked with Chaka Khan. Live with her too. Chaka Khan. Chaka. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Baz Luhrmann. I don't know who that is. Baz Luhrmann is the film producer of the movie Romeo and Juliet. Oh, that's he where also you sang did the, the song. Movie All Straight. Yeah, that's why I said the song and was nominated for my second Grammy. He also did the film with Nicole Kidman. He's an Australian guy. He also did um, uh, 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 Ballroom, Strictly Ballroom. He did all of these different kind of really big epic films. Okay. He's a great guy, yeah. Okay. She's worked with Grace Jones. Yep. Ooh. You know, we think Grace is kind of scary. Pull up to the bumper, baby. I like Grace in uh, Boomerang. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. That's great. Oh, she was so rude to that hey, darling. Hey, <laughs> darling. No, 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 Steve. Don't, don't quote. When, <laughs> when are you going to? <laughs> oh, man. Naomi Campbell. <laughs> Naomi Campbell, yeah. Frankie Knuckles, the late Frankie, Frankie Knuckles. Frankie Knuckles, rest in <laughs> peace. Yeah. Pete Tong. Pete Tong. He's another famous DJ out of Europe and does the EDM music, which the EDM uh, like festivals out in in Europe and in America now, they get about 200,000 people. (laughs) DJs can command up to a million dollars to DJ. Mm -hmm. You better get to spinning some. I can't see my singers can't get their hover rounds over there. (laughs) (laughs) And Mm -hmm. some other people may. Maceo Parker. Maceo Parker, yeah, work with Maceo, Fred Wesley, uh, uh, Pee Wee Ellis, uh, who wrote Say a Lot, I'm Black and I'm Proud, Mommy, Come Quick, Bring Me That Lickin' Stick, uh, and Fred Wesley, all of them, the JP JB, yeah. I used to front the band with them and tour. We did a movie together. Um, Ooh, yeah, what in, movie? In, uh, it's, my name is Maceo. Oh, it's a documentary yeah, it's, on it's him? It's a documentary on him. We filmed it in Germany and England, and it, yeah. So I've known those cats. They like my uncles. I've known them about over 30 years. They're up in age, too, now. 
Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. they up there, but they still, you know, tour still, and do yeah. stuff. They still bring in the funk. I don't know if St. Clair Pickney is still alive, but he was uh, JB's uh, tenor man for okay. years. Because Mazio is alto. Yeah, alto. Uh -huh. And Uncle Pee Wee is, a, is, is tenor as well. Tenor Pee -wee as well, always, yeah. You know. JB had a host to everybody. Yeah, he, man. he really, really trained a lot of people. He had Boosie Collins, didn't he? That was the second band. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying you yeah. said he had a host uh -huh. of people. Yeah, so we, yeah. We Bootsy, and his, Bootsy and his brother Catfish. See, there you go. You yeah. know Bootsy and Catfish. Oh, yeah, baby. Ah! <laughs> Girl, I can tell you yeah. stories. Well, the way you had explained house music was really it. It's a layer of, right, of songs that right. on top of a layer, on top, on top of, of another and, layer. And someone did have to put it together. Right. That would I would be one of those. And see, who to put me, it together with the rest of the Chicago pioneers, we now Chicago is probably they say is one of the capitals of house music. It's no, we, the we birthed it. Oh, okay. in Chicago, yeah, yeah. So to have the first lady of house be from Gary, it's because of that relationship Gary and Chicago have had with me like for a very long time. Right, yeah, blues right. players mm -hmm. would come to to Gary in Chicago to tour the Jacksons and all those early people was in the Chicago Kenzie report and Gary. Is from the Gary. Kenzie Report, yeah. Donald Kenzie, Kenzie report, Ralph and Kenny, I've known right. them all my life. So, you know, it's always had that kind of relationship. I was at Columbia at the time and, and just kind of looking for something and I knew I was going to be doing music and I sort of got drawn into the birth of it as the <laughs> creation was happening and I was I received the first uh, major label deal for house music signed through Europe for the world and that's what made me authentically historically the first lady, lady now help house. me out here because I need to I, I've always caught myself trying to explain this to people okay come on Steve now House music. Yes. What we called house music. Yes. At that particular time, everybody wanted to dance. Yes. So, but the thing about being a DJ in a nightclub, it's not so much as how much liquor people buy. Right on. They want you to dance for a long time. Yes. So in order to get a five-minute record turned into a 20 minute record yes you just didn't go from one song to the other you did what we call in radio for years segue okay you mixed it together there yes. was never an end yes you've never heard a house music song with an ending <laughs> they still N dancing over there <laughs> she <laughs> said they still dancing over there right. <laughs> and see if you were kind of tipsy too the club owners didn't want you they well at the time they wanted you so gone and sweaty when you when you th they finally turn the song off. The first thing you're gonna run to is get a drink. Is the bar, right? Yeah. But in that area, if you ever go down Jackson, yeah, down in that area, yeah, there were warehouses. Right. That's right. Empty. Come on, warehouses. talk about it. Tell so about the warehouse. So Frankie and all the guys got together and rented those spaces. Well, some of them so they were already kind of yeah, existing, kind of, and we yeah. brought Frankie and Ron Hardy. Shout out to Ron Hardy and all these different DJs. In Farley, Farley, Jack Master Funk, yes, mm -hmm. the Hot Mix Five. Hot Mix Five. Everybody had a, a crew. Yeah, everybody had a crew, and they were right down there on Roosevelt Street. You, yeah, the Meat Factory yep. and the, all of the yep. warehouses down there. Warehouse is where, and the warehouse was one of the main one ones. One of the main ones, and it's still authentically there. DJ International Records. We just got a street named. After DJ International Records on Randolph, across the street from the warehouse where it used to be, and that's true. We went there to dance. To dance. We went to dance. Nobody went to go meet no boyfriend with no lashes and high heels on. Wasn't nobody <laughs> trying to get no drink. I just, I, everybody was trying to get their dance on and that music, like you said, thirty minutes at least what, one oh, record. At least. Oh my god. You, but you didn't feel that. You just be doing your new <laughs> dance. Come on, Vogue. You know, Vogue was strong. Yeah, girl. Before my Donna made Vogue. She, <laughs> right, she right, made all right. of that she stuff up, up from, from, like, from a gay, the gay club. club. Right. That's right. She just, you know, she was biting. A lot of people went to clubs didn't know they were gay clubs. We didn't. I didn't know. They weren't even thinking about we, that. Nobody about it them. was the this energy. Gay, it was the energy. It was the music. It was vivacious. It was, like you said, the mix and the <laughs> segue. Or yeah. whatever you want to call it of a beat. You take an old beat and a new beat. And you old, mix them together. She, oh, my God. Some of those. But, you know, um... You know, it seems like in in our culture with music, we've always had dance music. It has transformed. Uh, 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 uh. No, no, no. We have always turn, danced turn, with our music. Turn it around. 
what? music you could dance. Well, music to. you could dance to. We always had, but we music never we never split to. it up but into genres. We never genre. split it up into the right. Right. It was just we we now we got some the music reason why that came to. along because. Everybody wanted a title, some kind right. of way. And then that's when they started with disco. Because that was the first time I ever heard us taking our music and saying it was another thing. But she well, we did, tell you. It wasn't us that was saying that. I no, know. Record but I'm, companies. Right. Record companies we're that were, were doing right. that because they started with, you know, the Billboard chart. And they always wanted, well, it was for control. It was for monetary right. things. It was, um, you know, rock was white music. R&B was C-H-R. black music. CHR country, mm-hmm. western middle of the road with certain certain things. Uh, radio stations, if it was a black station, it was all the way at the left end of the FM mm-hmm. dial. Right. Come on, Steve. I know you know uh, about the, some the, of this the, stuff. The, uh, uh, the, at the, the other end of the, of the yeah. dial. Uh-huh. You know, you just didn't go down there. But so, one thing they couldn't figure out, though, this is what made it. It's a, three little initials. BPM. Okay, yes. Yeah, beats per measure. Now. Or beats per minute. Yeah, if you take say a Teddy song, Mm. I don't love you anymore. Right. And you loop it a couple of times. See, they couldn't figure out what the heck was going on because those guys were looping these songs. Mm. They were going to loop the loop. Yep. They were looping it to make it keep repeating. Yeah. Right. And then they would lay another song on top of it. On top of it with the same beats per minute. Right. And then lay another. And then they figured out, wait a minute, contemporary gospel, here come Kirk Franklin. They can throw that in there. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't create a genre. So they just gave it a name. Yeah. Well, I mean, we called it house music. We, we called it that. No, no, no. We right. kids called it house invented, music. We, well, we called it house because we were inventing it in the house. In the house. That's how it came. It out. never had a chart. And also from the warehouse that it was played. And right you have to, to kind of think at that time, WBMX in Chicago because once the mixers got on the radio, they weren't on because they were great announcers. They, they, were, they, 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 they were mixers. They're mixers. And see, well, Saturday know, night, what, what do what do people do in on Saturday night in, in the summer? They ride. Yeah. Right. Up and down yes. the expressway yes. downtown. So when BMX put it on, yes. you thought you were in a club. And that was our first like radio stuff. Before that, we was right. just in the club. Just in the we'd club. We pressed the record out at Trax Records, Larry Sherman's place, and then we'd bring it to the club first cassette, or then on those uh, uh, acetate acetate. And and Fr- Frankie Knuckles would play it, or Ron Hardy. We watched the reaction to the club to the floor, and they yep. would just dance, dance, dance. And you take it to a radio station, and whoever was there would play one of the records. One of the records, you know. And then eventually BMX, like you said, because right. they start, you know, head hunting going to see what the kids listening to right they came up with oh these guys can do let's put them on but they everybody was broke except the club owners (laughs) and the radio station (laughs) y'all didn't get when did y'all finally start getting paid though um, i was a little bit more clever than that i was at columbia college studying the thing Mm -hmm. so you um, knew the business i got paid of don't matter uh, straight away there you go so you know i was just doing something else i was like watching and I was still a student and doing internships at the labels and yeah. at the radio stations, watching. Mm-hmm. You know, watching. That's why I probably ended up with that first major label there deal you go. out of England. And there it, you go. And and it was a a, a, a six digit deal. Ooh. And don't nobody, don't nothing get old in England. Jackie Wilson nothing still got a number one. Old. I told you about my daughter went Europe. to the club and it was like people. 80 to 12 dancing yeah. to Motown. Don't nothing get old over there. We love, they love it. The they older the better. With, they love it. They love that music because remember the services were over there, the armed services in yep. Germany yep. and over there in England. So they had all of soul music okay. sent over there. And a lot of the music that the British people know, that the B sides, yep. D sides, yep. that would they study the awesome. music. Awesome. We didn't even pick them up because okay. for us it was like, uh-uh, that ain't the one. We just went for what we call the so-called hits in the right. 60s and 70s. Because of publications. Because of, okay, because of publications. This is what they wanted you to listen to. Okay. And then when Billboard and everybody, see, that's why I told you, and she can agree with me. When it comes to record companies, there's a black Motown, there's a white Motown. True. Right. And the reason why I say that, because if you ask an African well, black person about Marvin Gaye, he going to give you... Grapevine, he gonna give you uh, how sweet it, it is. is. He gonna give you trouble man. There you go. But you yeah. ask one of our Caucasian brothers, what was he, Marvin Gaye? What's going on? What's going on? And yeah. it's not their fault. Yeah. 
It's not their fault. She can make that's true money until she's ninety nine years old in England. Hallelujah. I can't. Oh, I, he was I, even in a wheelchair. I could roll see, a thing. Roll a thing. He, he, was about, he was talking about. He was talking about Edwin Starr toured and love him till he oh, died. Man. Until he died. Wait a minute. Edwin Starr owned a castle. See, a castle. Yeah. Yes, baby. He bought an old castle in um, just outside of Birmingham, England. I think refurbed it. And I'm talking about like I, I got um, there in '89, and he was still and going. He was. I toured with him. We see? were doing TV shows together. Um. Me and Alexander O'Neill sold out Wembley eight nights in a row. And Alexander O'Neill. Alex is still touring over there now, selling out theaters. Yeah. He don't wow. Have, it's kind of like. Fake. We, fake. Gotta, yeah. we gotta go to England to Steve. We gotta you know, take our Alex show is, to England. So many people, I mean, Shaka still is go, you know, <laughs> going over there. They're having a reunion, and you know these brothers have been gone for a while, of the drifters. Ooh. Well, ain't but one original still li- living. That's Charlie Thomas. He, I don't think he tours anymore. It's, yeah, he, he did, got yeah. He, he got his own group, the, but he doesn't own the name. What's the no, name? Owns it, the name. The lady. It's she a lady. Owns well, I, I she owns it because right she ripped it off. She was married to one of the one guys, of the guys, and yep. she and still she, owns the name. She she what they call over here. She pinned a well, coined. She, the name. Her husband uh-huh. had it, and, and she, she, she inherited. barely inherited it. I can't think of her name right now, but... I told I, you about this with the Because she used temps. to tour The yeah. Temptations as well. She, This woman is on it. I was like... But I, she was so ruthless. I was scared to learn from her. I was like, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. When you learn from a crook, when you, you learn from a... You turn into one. You, there you go. And I just... That's not my There calling. you go. You know, you, now, give me, one, give me one of your signature riffs. I, I don't think I do signature riffs. I just you got a signature riff. I, not really. Um, What's the one you better you known for? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. No. I, 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 Girl, I, give me some. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, she got some. Listen to that. <laughs> now, to the bottom. If I didn't know no better, I think they were shot. <laughs> Shaka. Shaka. He's like, something, something, Shaka. something, tell Shaka. me something good. That's the end of this week's podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week.